Hello and welcome to the Football Revolution. I'm your host, Gio. Thanks for joining us. And alongside me, the Encyclopedia of Football, my co-host, VIG. Good evening, my friend. Rich words. Good evening. <laughs> Mate, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you liked the intro that you wrote for yourself. Yeah, very good. Oh, I'm glad I'm glad you got the email. <laughs> How's everything, mate? You well? Everything good? Uh, we're now ready for, what is it, a month's worth of uh, black bags under your eyes and uh, a thousand coffee cups. But you've, you've if already- If I don't have them already, oh, I'm definitely haven't got them now, so- I, I've, I've now realised yeah. you were in training over in France. You weren't just visiting your brother and catching up with uh, with your little bro, but you were also g- getting used to those 10 coffees, 12 coffees a day to say you're ready for the World Cup. You were in training. Getting acclimatised. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got, you've got to you've got to put in the work if you if you want the reward at the end of the day. So, so are you ready to go? Then you, there should be no excuses. You should be able to watch all these games, even the three games when there's three three. No, no one else is back. awake. Yeah, um, you should be able to watch everything. Oh, I'm going to give it a crack. Yeah, I am too. See how it goes. I, I don't think I'm as uh, well trained as you are, but I, I'm definitely going to have a shot. Uh, the greatest show on earth has started with host Qatar kicking off the World Cup against uh, Ecuador, which we'll talk about a little bit more later in the show. No A-League men's uh, action for a few weeks, but we'll have an exciting A-League women's wrap coming a little later. Congratulations to the Wellington Phoenix on breaking the women's crowd record, 5,213, which is a pretty cool achievement, uh, even though the result didn't go to plan. Yeah, that's a, breaking the record for a crowd attendance is um, it's, a, it's a great start to the season. So hopefully they can uh, push on from that and, and hopefully that sends out a message to the rest of the league, um, get down there and support the girls. The bar, the bar is very high though. So in your first game ever in the uh, A-League women's competition, in the gone, in. Yeah, you've broken you've broken the record. So then, you know, any way, I don't know, is there any other way from there? Well, look, we, you, if, if you've broken it once, why, why can't you do it again? So, you know, let, let's just let's stay positive and, and see what they can do this season. Mate, I like that positive nature. And we wish Jets player Adriana Konjarski all the best with her recovery after colliding with Raw keeper uh, Hensley Handcuffs. So um, there could be a couple of jokes there. That's why I made sure I put in her full name there. But uh, look, not not after what's happened. If it was if it was something that was clumsy and, and that, then maybe so. But uh, it looks like she has a pretty serious injury. So we do wish her all the best in her recovery. And uh, it was an accident. It was intentional but uh, you know unfortunately she will miss quite a few weeks if uh, if the footage is, is as accurate as I think it will be uh, and our World Cup Peely Awards uh, are also here to entertain you so they both the uh, the women's rap as well as the uh, Peely Awards will uh, will fill in our usual uh, revolutionised roundup for at least uh, a month or so and uh, then they'll be back but until then uh, you'll get a, a new couple of segments yeah, pretty exciting yeah good Peely Awards yeah the Peely Awards are amazing uh, Sydney looked really good against Celtic and came away with a confidence-building win. Always a difficult assignment for Andrew's men with the travel and being a friendly, but the Sky Blues put on a good show. Uh, Hewitt Bell was excellent, as was our friend Max Burgess, who scored the winner with a brilliant Arjun Robin-type goal. Yeah, and people are people are screaming, screaming out, saying, "Why isn't he starting uh, week in, week out for Sydney FC?" But um, we've been no, screaming that. So it's- we, we have. But <laughs> when, when I said people, that's that's exactly who I meant. So okay. Um, yeah, someone's someone's got to hit the nail on the head there and, and got something right. But no, he's a, he's a terrific player. Um, he's got quality. He's got time on the ball, and, and he's got a brilliant left foot. So it's good to see him um, scoring a goal, and hopefully he gets his chance the rest of the season. Were you excited about Sydney's performance? Uh, yes. Look, Celtic come off a twenty four hour flight. They've they've had one training session to you know loosen up a bit. Um, you know, I'm I'm not, I'm not a fan of friendly game football games. You know, they're, they're good in the preseason. Um, to get minutes in the legs to to build up your you know your your fitness, but um, I'm just not a fan of of mid season football games. As much as the players tell you that they're happy to be here, they're not. Yeah, look, maybe the way you do it is you say to them that uh, they're only going to get paid based on some sort of criteria. So if you score no goals, right, you get no you get that portion of your payment is not non existent. If you concede more than X amount of goals, or we also take off. So so you might be coming for free. That way it encourages your team to put in, right? Yeah, look, it's it's a it's a market employee. Um, a lot a lot of them will will be happy to just to come out here to see a bit of sun. I saw Everton boys down at Bondi Beach doing a bit of yoga and stretching on the beach. So you know that's good enough. If that's good enough for for me. That's that's good enough for them, I think. Oh, I'm, more, I'm more worried about the Celtic boys. If we'd seen them down the beach, then the nearest chemist, they would have all been hopping into, wouldn't they? <laughs> Get some, some if they were, really, if they were down the beach on Sunday, I'll tell you what, <laughs> they would have been absolutely roasting. So, All right, Wednesday, the Wanderers open their Sydney Super Cup campaign against Merseyside Giants Everton. Marco Rudin's team, one of the early pace setters in the A-League, will fancy their chances against Frank Lampard's side, who haven't started the season very well at all. Yeah, look, we'll, we'll see uh, how good the A-League is compared to the, to the Premier League, I guess. So, um, no, nah, the, the Wanderers are, are coming off a high with the with the Derby win. Um, 
and and Everton out here, you know, played a game against Celtic just to to loosen up, and and now they've got the Wanderers. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see, and it'll be a good test for the Wanderers because there's obviously some some quality players in that Everton side. Yeah, most certainly is. Is there anything else I didn't see? Vig. Um, I don't know. Do we? No, let's let's roll into the to the roundup. All right, we have got plenty. Yeah. I know you're excited. There's, there's, some pl- of this stuff. there's plenty happening. Look, there's five five women's games, so let, let's get into it and and we'll chat a bit about that. All right, just before we get into that, uh, this week in the player escape room, we are joined by Wellington Phoenix's star off season recruit, top notch, top notch midfielder Stephen Yagarkovic. So I can't wait to have a chat with him. Uh, a League women's table. Okay, there's only been one round, but uh, Melbourne City, Raw, Adelaide, Western United, all on top of the table with uh, three points after all uh, collecting important wins uh, and then rounding out the top six Canberra and Perth who uh, had a draw uh, my weekly wrap has been replaced by shout out I did contemplate uh, removing it but I thought you know what if it's good enough for the boys it's good enough for the girls and they all put in a fantastic performance on the weekend so um, dedicating a weekly song to a team or a player for their good or bad performance this week's shout out goes to City's live wire Maria Rojas I've chosen for her Megan Trainer major look she she most certainly did. Wow, amazing performance! She everything she touched uh, looked a million bucks. She looked dangerous every time she had the ball, and I actually had a few uh, goosebumps, a few tingles every time she got the ball because I thought, wow, this girl could do something with this. So um, yeah, for me, this week's shout out goes to uh, City's Maria Rojas, Megan Trainers, Major Look. You going to sing us some of the song? No, I don't know the words, <laughs> <laughs> mate. You know what? I might start uh, if we can. If we can get their budget increase, we might be able to start putting some snippets in. Uh, look, even if uh, if it's only on the um, the video portion of things. So, um, the show is now in full. The full show now is on um, video, which is uh, on our YouTube channel. So, look, I can guarantee that. I don't know if in the audio side, we might have to speak to the audio team, but uh, we might be able to get a snippet in there as well. Might be able to Photoshop it in or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, our uh, A League women's rap, as as promised, is uh, is up this week. So. So um, similar to the men's, but uh, slightly different. So we'll give you the score, a player that was worth the admission, lesson from the game, and a game fact. So the first game was the uh, Brisbane Raw versus Newcastle Jets on the Saturday. The score was 2-1 to the home team, the Brisbane Raw. For me, the player that was worth the admission alone was Shay Connors. The Raw forward uh, turned the Jets inside out, creating both goals. She was absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the men's team goes and knocks and asks if they can borrow a few games as well, because she brought something to the table I haven't definitely seen in the Raw team, probably haven't seen in the A-League, full stop. Maybe Charlie Austin wants her in the, on, in the squad so he can get some service or something. Oh, he, he's begging, please. I'm telling you, she she was fantastic. Uh, the lesson from the game is the Jets don't play out from the back unless you do more work at training. So uh, get to training, start working out. The goalkeeper was absolutely chaotic. She came Just out to kick the ball and... It, play to your strengths. Yeah, right? play, to your, play strengths. to your strengths. Yeah, and if a strengths means kicking up into the grandstand, it's not pretty. It's not the sort of football I'd play, but if it means it costs you three points, then just... <laughs> Just stick with what's uh, what's easiest for you. And the game fact for me was um, no taking it easy in round one with 25,006 yellow cards. Now, I know this wasn't a friendly, but it was the opening game of the season. So usually you sort of- Friendly fire, 25,000. 25,006 oh. yellow cards. But usually don't, isn't there a bit of a, a jab and move and stuff and you kind of test your opponent out? There's not going out for the knockout. These guys were going full out for a, a TKO. Yeah, well, uh, hung, hungry for three points and, um, you know, started the season with a bit of a bang. So, look, it was a good first game. The second game of the uh, the Saturday uh, triple triple header was uh, Canberra United versus Perth Glory. I still can't understand how we have a team in the women's comp or the men's comp that don't have a team in the in the, in the reverse. But I'm still trying to figure out how you know which game was first, second or third when they were all 3 p.m. kickoffs. I'm just uh, by alphabetical putting <laughs> putting um, a, a theory together. Three, games, and so three games at the same time. That's uh, I don't know. Well, that's they've the got to work on something like that. No, that's they? the new thing that they're doing now. So they got you got all three games at once. You can watch them all at once. I find it hard enough watching one game, but apparently now I'm going to have to get good at watching three at one time. So I just watched them all separately. That was the easiest way. But uh, yeah, Canberra United uh, hosted Perth Glory. It was a two-two draw. Pretty interesting game. The player that definitely was worth uh, the bucks that you pay to go and watch was uh, American import Gabrielle Lindsay Coleman she bagged a goal and looked dangerous throughout uh, definitely like what I saw from her uh, what I think they nef- need to be working on and this is both teams is corners so neither team's keepers should leave their line ever unless they do a lot of work with the goalkeeping coaches um, they came out didn't get close to the ball and they both conceded from corners so uh, uh, my idea would be stay on your line get your, your defenders to challenge and just load up your posts as well because if you start leaving your line, you're going to be copping lots of goals this year. And uh, the game fact for me is 42 shots in this clash, only 15 on target, and I'll show off my math skills. That was only 35% on uh, uh, trying to hit the old onion bag. 
Not bad from you. Yes, yeah, not you, bad. You might be uh, in line to take up a uh, VIG stats man. No way. The VIG stats man is a different level. I'm just not bad at maths, you know. And, and and these days, like I said, without carry the one, do this, and all this weirdo stuff, you just get out a calculator and you just punch the numbers in, right? <laughs> so for you, it's the uh, debutants uh, playing in the Melbourne Derby. So tell us about yeah, this one. Yeah, Western United versus uh, Melbourne Victory, um, first edition of of the Melbourne Derby, I guess the, this version of the Melbourne Derby. Uh, score was one nil to the to the deb- debutants. Um, um, so the play, player to watch or stood out for worth the admission was uh, young West United defender Sydney Cummings. Uh, she's five foot ten, I think, strong, commanding figure. She just dominated at the back. I thought she was brilliant. Um, lessons that look West United passing, passing, passing. I think they had sixty two percent passing accuracy, um, but it's probably a big reason why they only had forty one percent possession because they kept turning the ball over. Yeah, look, so, it makes it very difficult when you're passing the ball you know, and you're losing the ball and you're only hiding 41%. I just hope they don't replicate the men's uh, style, which is suck up the pressure and then get them on the counter because it worked the first year, but it's not working this year. So um, teams have probably caught on to that, whether it be in the men's or the women's competition. So, yeah, I hope they've got a plan B. And uh, it's that new girls, uh, Western with a huge scalp, a bit of rivals and, and back to and, the, and, and a back-to-back champion in um, a Melbourne victory. So yeah, look, big, you, big you couldn't ask for more. Yeah, yeah. could you? In, in the opening uh, for, game. For the first game of the season, um, decent crowd out there. So it was, um, you know, all they could ever wish for. Well, it's all or nothing. You go in there, right, and they've given you the champions, right? So you go in there and you either sink or swim. And uh, the lifeguards have happily said they're they're swimming nice on their backs and nice and comfy. They were just doing the derby win. just doing breaststroke, weren't they? Just just chilling. So the uh, the fourth game, so the first of the the uh, Sunday games was the uh, Phoenix's first game as well. So another debutant, uh, as we said, huge crowd for them at home at the Cake Tin against uh, a very a very good side in Melbourne City. Unfortunately, the crowd was the highlight of their day, and so it should be. But uh, they didn't get the result they wanted, and uh, Melbourne City ran out four one winners. For me, this was a really easy one of, of the whole weekend. This was the easiest one for me to come up with. It was a uh, carbon copy of Marco Tilio. It's live wire Maria Rojas. So she's almost the spinning image of, of him. She's uh, dangerous. She's smart. She just looks every time she's on the ball, there's panic stations for the defense. So she scored a nice goal, was fouled for the penalty, and uh, she said, welcome to the league, the Phoenix. So a bit of a rough way for them to be introduced against a player like her in a team like City, but that's the way the cookies crumble. She was hot like chili, wasn't she? She was amazing. Yeah, she was fantastic. So the thing I think that they need to work on this week is uh, Wellington uh, is ball watching. You can you can as a fan or as a commentator or as you know guys like we are doing the media side of things. Yes, you can watch, but as a player, you can't ball watch. They were watching. Uh, the only thing they didn't do was applaud some of the play from City, but they were watching. And then before they actually realised, the ball was behind them or the ball was around them or it was played in. You know, a cross was played in, and it was just too late. So maybe they were just in awe. It was probably a bad game for them up against uh, a team like that who are very well organised but uh, hats off to Melbourne City hopefully the Phoenix bounce back this week Phoenix are a very young side though they right. were very so maybe they're just overawed with the emotion of the occasion um, and, and coming up against a Melbourne City side who have plenty of quality and, and have been there and, and done that before yeah, most certainly. So and the match fact fact for me was former A-League star Dario Vidasic's first game as coach of Melbourne City as he follows in his father Rado's um, footsteps into the A-League coaching ranks. So nice little bit yeah. of trivia there. Congratulations to him. Yeah, it was. He's, he's come out and, uh, you know, there's it it pressure on him. I know there was for the Phoenix for their first game, but his first game as head coach of City and he's come out and it was a very impressive performance. And if you're a coach, I'd be uh, chuffed with the performance they put in. And I suppose even from a fan's point of view or from guys like us who are trying to critique it, you couldn't ask for much more. Yeah, 100%. And speaking of uh, city coaches, rumours about today that uh, Patrick Kisnorbo could be on his way to League One okay. in France with uh, with Troyes. So oh, well if, deserved. Uh, Look, massive loss for us, but uh, for the for the A-League here. And but the thing is, though, when you put in performances like his teams have and they play a brand of football and he's brought in a winning culture and so much great things into Melbourne City, even with the star players they have, um, it's no surprise that other people are yeah, chasing people you. People are watching and uh, I think they're part of the City Football Group as well, but... Um, you know, perfect progression for him in his career. So I don't think there'll be many. There'll be a shortage of coaches though trying to take over the reins at uh, Melbourne City. Do you with the quality of players oh, they have there? No doubt there'll be there'll be plenty lined up. When you walk in and they say, "Oh, by the way, here's your roster," and you see Naboot, you see J Mac, you see. Uh, Glover, you see, it, Tilio, you see. Mr. Glover, Lover. even you and I could McLaren. do it, I reckon. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I think one of us is a big chance. Look, even if we take turns so we can at least still host the show, is that Just work? do what, one week each? <laughs> yeah, we'll just, right, we'll just do one week on, one week off. And moving to the last game of the round, uh, VIG, how'd you see that one? Yeah, Adelaide versus uh, Sydney FC. Um, 
Adelaide ran out uh, one 0 victors. Why do they um, love playing each other so much? Doesn't matter what it could be it under tens, it could be like men's, women's, anything. Oh, we've, we've got to get the um, the youth the youth playing against each other, don't we? Oh, definitely. They, they, should, just, they should play. They should play the youth, then they play the women's, and then they play the A League. Oh, there's just something day. in there, right? It's just it's just fireworks. Yeah, there's every there's time something they play. about it, and and, and uh, South Australia or Adelaide have a, a big reputation uh, for their youth program as well, so produce uh, plenty of quality players. So this one, like I said, tight game and late winner. Yeah. So for me. Worth the price price of admission, uh, Courtney Vine. She worked tirelessly up and down all day for Sydney. Um, she's involved in everything. You know, she's she's played at, at the highest level with the Matildas now, um, and establishing herself in in that squ- in that squad. So, um, unfortunately, she's just on on the wrong side of the scoreboard. And I think she did everything she possibly could to to help Sydney get get any something out of that, that game. So, I think Adelaide's keeper did as well. I, I um I think she deserves a mention. I know she did cop a goal, but I think she saved numerous um you know numerous times. She she kept them in the game I think uh, Princess Sabini had quite a few good chances and Vine was you know always at it and, and causing all sorts of problems for him but I think she was fantastic as well yeah most definitely so uh, Adelaide have got to do more with their large amount of possession they had 59% of possession um, but you know they might not be so lucky next time yeah, I think when you have that much possession, you need to do something with it. And uh, look, on another day, Sydney might have put three or four past you and you end up losing 4-1 when you've dominated the game. So just take your chances. And the thing is, it's great to get an early warning shot and it doesn't cost you three points, right? Yeah, look, they've come away with a 1-0 win, but at the same time, they'd, they'd be a little bit disappointed with themselves, I think. Yeah, most certainly. All right, and uh, what's your match fact? Uh, it's the first time Adelaide has beaten Sid- Sydney in the last uh, five attempts. Yeah, so it was uh, four wins to Sydney before that. So there was no draws in there. It was all uh, all sky blue. Oh, but uh, traffic. Adelaide, yeah. Adelaide have got a little bit of payback and uh, now they're on a run. Let's see if later in the season they can uh, make it two from two. All right, that's the end of our uh, A-League women's wrap. So up after the break, we welcome to the player escape room uh, Wellington Phoenix superstar Stephen Yugarkovich. Speak to you after the break. You're listening to the Football Revolution. Joining us now in the player escape room is a man who's uh, had over 150 appearances in the A-League. He's the heart of his team's midfield. Please welcome to the show, Wellington Phoenix star, has stars off-season signing, Stephen Yagarkovich. G'day, mate. Welcome to the show. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Having me and looking forward to it. Mate, I'm very excited to get you on. As I said to you off air, a lot of the boys at, at both the Wanderers, even the Jets, and now at the Phoenix, all talk about how great a guy you are. So I don't know what uh, whatever you're doing off to, to pay them off, but I'd keep doing it if I was you. <laughs> like I said, I need to find out who it was so I can buy him a coffee. <laughs> Mate, I think I think there'll be a few coffees though. There's a handful <laughs> of guys on each club have all said you're a top guys, so I'm very excited. Mate, um, after stints with the Jets and the Wanderers, it's been a busy year for you. You were married in June, so congrats. Thank you, appreciate it. And now you've also moved to the Phoenix. So tell us why the move to Wellington. Was that your honeymoon gift to your wife or what was the thinking behind moving to Wellington? Oh, it was a, it was a, something that popped up in the back end of last year that caught my eye, um, the style of football and, and things like that, but also the challenge off the field. Uh, I said to to my wife, it's an extended honeymoon. So um, just enjoy it. And it's it's a, a year away for us to, to get to know each other a bit more. But on the field, it was somewhere where I can – Back, get back to enjoying my football, which I have been, and um, and and challenge myself in a different system and in a different country, um, as well. So that was the main the main idea of it. Have you just signed for the one year? Is that the plan at the moment? Yeah, at the moment, I just so growing up, I was always on the longer term contracts. In the last few years, I've just I like to just have that one year contract and just see where things go. So it's also like I said, it was a challenge and it was a different. Um, it was out of both our comfort zones going to a new country. So also. It was something I had to look at it if we're both enjoying our time here that we have that option to stay in. And at the moment, we're loving our time here and really enjoying it. So it's safe to say, though, you're still an Aussie Croatian. There's no, you're not going to become a Kiwi or change your citizenship or try and play for the, uh, for the All Blacks, are you, or the All Whites or whatever they classify themselves in football? Oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Croatian through and through. So <laughs> I, unfortunately, I think by law, you can only hold two passports. That'd be a hard one to sacrifice. But yeah, no, nah, I'm really enjoying our time here at the moment and it's enjoying my football as well. Mate, uh, going back a little bit in time, so your father, John, played in the old NSL for Sydney United and obviously they've had a lot of success this year uh, making the, the cup final of the FFA Cup and unfortunately you know, running out of gas against the Bulls, but a, a fantastic achievement for a team playing in a lower tier. Um, has he been your greatest influence on your career? Yeah. Um, looking back on it growing up, it was him and my brother and also my cousin. That's at Western United, Stephen Lustica. So he's um, he's actually my first cousin. So growing up, getting into football, I didn't really have a choice because the old man played, my brother played, and um, my cousin played. So I was 
chucked into it even at a younger age and I loved it. So growing up playing against them and, and watching the old men and looking through photos of how we used to play because obviously never got the chance to really watch him because it was – he was finished by the time I started getting into it. Um, but, yeah, that were the biggest influences in my life to to follow in their footsteps and, and make them proud. So he must be buzzing now that he gets to watch you. So you didn't get to watch the old man, but he gets to watch his son play in the A-League and that. So he's, I think he's vicariously living through you and probably thinking to himself, if only I had these opportunities when I was playing. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a quite a... He loves his football, so he analyzes every game and and everything I do. So he's always calls me up. We always speak after games and and things I can do better. And and let me tell you, he tells me things I've done bad as well. So it's not always just the good stuff. He's he's the kind of guy that'll that'll tell me where I've stuffed up and and it's sometimes it's what I need to hear. And he puts him back in my place and just things I need to work on and I can be better at. So that's something that I'm grateful for to have someone pushing me in that direction. It's quality, man. Um, do you catch up with Stephen Lustica often? Uh, I think you know one of the downsides of the A-League, obviously, is the limited teams, which means you play each other 25 times. But the good thing is if you've got a cousin who plays for a club, then you get to see him more often. So it's probably in your favour. So do you get to see him much? Do you get to spend much time with him? Yeah, so he he got married in um in the off season as well. So we went down there to Melbourne. He got married in Melbourne for the wedding. So yeah, we try to catch up on when they come here and when we go down to Melbourne for a coffee at least before the game. But usually in the off season, we we have family events and we we tend to catch up there, which is good. Um, outside the football environment, to put both put our hair down because we're quite um good pros and in the season we we stick to what we have to do and things like that but it was good in the off season to catch up um with a few drinks and stuff like that so that was good and yeah trips away we always try to catch up for that coffee even before or after the game has he twisted your arm at all trying to get you down to western united i know he's telling you there's some silverware there was some silverware <laughs> not so much looking like that this year but has he tried to get you down to uh to play melbourne oh uh, it's actually it's it's a different not a different relationship it's a relationship where we don't tend to tap into each other's football it's just it's a relationship where we just enjoy like having each other around and we actually talk about different things other than football which is um which is good because you can't always be football 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 but we at the end of the day we talk about european leagues and croatian teams and things like that so yeah we just stay away from that side of things and and we just get on just in other other ways Mate, I'm going to edit that and replay it for my son. He's 12. He plays at Sydney Olympic and all he talks about is football, FIFA. He starts rambling on about something, telling me this. And I said, is this a real story? He said, no, this happened on FIFA, Dad. And I was like, can we talk about something else? So if I can get him, if I can get one of the pros of the A-League telling him that there needs to be other things to football, maybe he'll listen. He doesn't want to listen to his old man. So I'm going to snip at this and I'm going to send it to his phone. And just play it for him. <laughs> and hopefully, maybe he'll listen to you. He doesn't listen to me. Uh, maybe, maybe. Tell him there's a there's a bit more to Call of Duty as well. I enjoy that. So if he can get on that as well, that's a good start. <laughs> I said, that's a worst. I'm getting my way from this one. Um, <laughs> after a few draws to the start to the season, the team turned on an excellent performance last week. How's the vibe in the squad? Yeah, I think um, in general in football, you win on the weekend. That that week leading to the next game, life becomes easier. Um, it's just everyone's happier. And it was sort of a, I felt personally as well, just a, a little... Um, just a little thing off our back where we just we got that first win and the way we did it was as well encouraging. So it's something that we can build on and I think the performances before that were encouraging but we were just lacking maybe defensively or little mistakes costed us. So I think that win on the weekend was something to to just give us motivation and, and belief going forward. Right. Mate, I don't want to harp on the past because like I said, now you're a, you're a Wellington Phoenix player but is there one thing you miss about uh, the Wanderers? Is there anything in particular that you do miss about Wanderers as a player or something they do there or whatever? Is there something? Um, yes and no. I think he, like you can pinpoint certain things like the facilities over there were excellent but then we come here and we get this massive upgrade in these new facilities so that um, overtook it. But yeah, I grew, grew close to certain players um, and relationships that you form within each team are different. So those players that I got in got on really well um, back at the Wanderers, like Tommy Marcello, we became really close. Um, so that's someone, yeah, so certain players and the relationships I had with players um, I miss. So, But other than that, I'm really enjoying my time here. Like the boys here are excellent and the whole club here and set up. I'm really loving it. That's great news for the Phoenix fans. So I, I did try and set a bit of a trap there for you, but you passed it with flying colours. <laughs> Mate, the A-League men's competition breaks after your game against Western United on the weekend until early December, but your women's team play their first ever home game against Melbourne City next Sunday. Has it created a buzz around the club? Yeah, so at the moment we're using the same facility, um, which is exciting so we can all work together and it's good to 
to bounce off each other and create that club family um, as well. So I'm sure a lot of us will be going down to that game. Um, it'll be a good game to watch and to finally have them back home will be excellent and exciting. So we're really looking forward to that as a club, this to, to bond together and enjoy it. Is it awesome? I, I'm guessing this is something that uh, you didn't experience last year, but I'm guessing the players are also excited about the fact they have to keep coming to Wollongong and relocating and everything. So to be able to play as a New Zealand team in New Zealand is something rare yeah. in the last few years, but probably something that's uh, also going to give you guys a better shot at uh, achieving something this year. Yeah, of course. I think playing in our home home um, field and looking back at my past in the A-League coming to Wellington, it's not a fun trip um, because obviously the international departure and the earlier earlier flights and things like that it's not it is a tough trip to come to so we need to maximize that on the field and and be ready to to come out flying against teams because it does usually take 10 or 15 minutes for teams to to get into the game just because of the travel and things like that and just having the home fans behind us is um it's been a great start to the year so hopefully they keep coming out Mate, what's the team's goals for the season obviously at the start of the season uh, all fucking the coaching staff say that this is what we want to achieve is there a minimum bar for you guys uh, finals, that's for us the minimum that we need to make the finals and, and do well. And, and last year, obviously, they made the finals and then losing to the eventual winners, but they gave them a run for their money in that, that game. So we're aiming for finals and, and higher up as high as we can be so we can give something back to the fans and, and things like that. What about personal targets, mate? I know you've uh, you've represented Australia at uh, youth level and stuff. Have you got any personal targets this year hoping to, to achieve other than uh, obviously just spending some time in Wellington with the wife and getting to know your new teammates or is there a personal target you've got there yourself? Yeah, I've got personal goals that I like to keep close to to myself with goals and assists and tackles and things like that because I pride myself on that hard work. But ultimately, if you play well um, and the team's doing well, you, you, you're going to stand out as players and and – then your performance obviously gets spoken about more. But I think the key for me is just to, to win as many games as I can personally because I love winning. Um, and that'll, for me, I just want to play finals. I've only played one final series um, back at Newcastle. So I just want to experience that again and enjoy my football um, moving forward because getting back to enjoying my football and, and just really just having a crack. Oh, I can't believe that stat. You've only played finals football once. Two finals games. One was uh, it was a semi final against Melbourne City when we won, and then straight into the final where we we lost against Victory and the VAR. So Costa still reminds me of that to this day when he was <laughs> the goal was offside and the VAR turned off. So still a little bit sour about that. But he um, yeah he brings that up every now and then, which is quite funny. And we can look back on it now to say we played against each other in a final, and now we're here together. Mate, that has to be on my list this year now. Yugarkovic plays more final football. I can't believe that. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to harp about it. It's something that obviously <laughs> I think should have changed, but uh, hopefully this year we had another finals uh, appearance or multiple finals appearances yep. record. Mate, let's get into the first game I like to play with my guests. So this is called Six Aside. I'll ask you six questions comparing you and one of your Wellington Phoenix teammates. You mm-hmm. can tell me, uh, honestly, who you think is better at this, uh, whatever I name. Done. Sounds good. First one. Who would be a better superhero, you or Ollie Sale? Ollie, he's got more height about him. Okay, could you compare him to someone? Is there someone out there in Marvel Land or DC Land that you think could uh, power or something? Mr. Stretch, Fantastic Four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about who works out harder in the gym, you or Tim Payne? Me, for sure. Okay, is he lazy in the gym? Not lazy, just gets through it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Look at you sitting on the fence there. All right. Is, is there anybody in there that if I'd given you that person, it would have been a tough – because that's straight away out the blocks you just said me. Um, one there that if you named them, you would have said, oh, I don't know, and had to really decide. If it was yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the young boys re- work really hard in the gym out here. It's it's good to see they're trying to better themselves every day. Like Wayno is very – um very strong and powerful and you can see he gets it from the gym because every gym session is in there working hard. So a lot of the young boys do really push it to the edge. Yeah, but is that also because of socials? Come on, let's be honest here, Stephen. It's funny when the cameras come out, a lot of the boys are doing their Tabatas and their, <laughs> their their bicep curls and their summer weights, so that's good to see as well. As I said, your dad missed out on a lot of things when he was obviously playing in the old uh, equivalent to the A-League, but he didn't have to worry about what hat he was wearing, what he said. Did someone recorded nah. his thongs off or on? or so, Exactly. So at least now that it's – look, that's there's some pros and cons, but, uh, yeah, I think these days you have to look good because otherwise you're going to get caught out on socials, right? Yep, the social media is everywhere, so you just got to be careful. <laughs> Who's the better roommate, you or Scott Wooten? Oh, I've rooms with Scotty, actually. Oh, you have? Okay, I've got that one right then. Um, it was quite a good room, actually. He fell asleep with his laptop on. Did um, we call it a draw? I know I know you guys had Yeah, 
start of the season. Do we? I haven't ha- ever had a draw in any of these, and I'm normally pushing for an answer. But yeah, and no, I'll, I'll call that a draw because I think we're quite both quite good. If I if I said it was a nil or draw, Scotty would be happy with that. He'd think that was yeah, yeah. clean sheet yeah. and love and life. Yeah, we'll play that. We'll play a draw for that one. Mate, if you can say you had a, a draw with a, a um, ex-United player, it's not a bad result, right? Yeah, very good result, actually. <laughs> Who takes longer in the shower, you or David Golden Ball's ball? Oh, Ballie, for sure. Does he? Yeah, 100%. Does is he, is he take the longest out of everybody? Um, uh, no, nah, there's a few more that take longer, but he's definitely looking after himself. You covered, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got me covered. <laughs> But is it just is it just showers? There's no baths and all these sorts of fancy things, is there? I could imagine him being in there having a bath with some. Nah, he's oh. he loves a sauna and then into the shower after. So yeah, he looks after himself. Okay, mate, you still you guys haven't played at uh, Allianz this year, have you yet? Uh, no, I think we're there in either December or January. So uh, Joe Gauchi was telling me the other day they got those fancy shower heads. You know, it looks oh, like oh really? Was, yeah. So mate, when you get there, just make sure you get a good first pick. So even before you put your boots or anything, even before you get ready for the game, just make sure you go and leave your towel and your stuff just in, in that shower slot. Yeah, I'll have a look. I at don't that. Know, I don't know how many there are, but I've heard that they're they're fancy pantsy out at uh, Sydney at Allianz, and the stadium's amazing. So make sure you uh, you get first dibs on that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'll remember that. Yeah, make sure you jump ahead of Bally. Now, Bally, <laughs> if, if you don't get ahead of Bally, you might end up missing out altogether. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Who's funnier, you or Costa Barbarousas? Now, I know you said, you said he gave you a bit of stick uh, about previous results, so this could be another close one. Yeah, I think Costa, he got, he's got the little little one-liners and he's got, I'll say, the experience behind him. So I'll, I'll give Costa that one. Mate, I know when I've chatted with Costa in the past, he yeah, it's it's very subtle, right? You don't know that yeah. he's you don't know he's nailing you, but he's done it quite easily. Exactly. As walk away later, later, you're kind of impressed, but you're also embarrassed because you're kind of like, that was too easy, but it was yeah. fun, so you kind of let it go. You sort of, sometimes you walk into it with him and he takes advantage of it and, you know, him being around the track a bit longer than me, I'll give him that. It's nice to have him back there, isn't it? He, he was obviously a, a big player for the Phoenix in the past and he's been around and had success at, uh, you know, the victory in uh, Sydney FC, but having him back home, being a Kiwi is a big thing for yeah. you guys. Yeah, he's excellent. He's the way he played, especially on the weekend. He's hard work, not just with the ball, without the ball. And he's he's such a just a good guy. And I, I get on quite well with him. And I'm and I'm yeah pleased to be working with him now because I've always admired him. And he's a good goal scorer, and he's just a just a good leader as well. Mate, I, I know this for a fact. He um he loves to copy off um he loves to copy off Ted Lasso. So last year they invited all players over to his family. So you'll know if he really likes you at Christmas time, if you get an invite, <laughs> week time, if you get an invite over to the family dinner to the uh, Barbarousas uh, rip off Ted Lasso lunch or dinner, wherever it's classified as, you've made it. If you haven't, then you've been warned. If not, I'll blame you. Yeah, you can blame me. I'm like, thanks <laughs> now. I'm just saying, make sure you invite Yakovic times too. Or don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. And the last one, who's better dress? Who has better dress sense? You or Clayton Lewis? Um, I'll go me. Clay's uh, black on black, black jeans, black shirt, runners. So I'll, I'll take that one off him. Okay. I change it up a bit. I go blue jeans, black shirt. So it's a little bit more color. So if you get him as a Chris Kringle this year, there's definitely going to be a piece of color thrown in there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> for sure. Okay. What, <laughs> is there anything going on for you guys at uh, at Christmas time there? Or I know obviously this is. You know, going to be a unusual situation with it shutting down now for the World Cup and then having a big break. So, do you guys get a bit of time to yourselves? That give you time to go and buy a few Chrissy presents, so you can't say to the wife, "Look, I was so busy travelling with the waitress, I bought you nothing this year." This year, there's no excuse. Right? <laughs> time ever? There's no. Excuse. Yeah, and no, I think I think we're going to have a, a team dinner after the game on the weekend, um, just for all of us to hang out and and just yeah bond a little bit. And I think we're they're planning a a few days off after that. So I think that's the latest news. Um, and then, yeah, so back into it, I think, early to mid next week. And then, yeah, three weeks to prepare and get ready and, and to stay fit. I think that's the main one that we all come in ready, not just lazy, going through the motions. It's, we've got to stay on top of it so we're ready to go after the break. And just a bonus one. Tell us uh, one thing you know you're much better at than a teammate. So you can pick anyone here. This is a free wild card here. Just mm. anything that you've noticed that you just know, I've definitely got that guy covered. i got Ruth in golf, Alex Rufa. Okay, you do? Yep. Is he good at all? He's good, but I've got him. Okay, what 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 do you play off? Uh, I'm about 15 at the moment. Okay, you're going good. Yeah, I'm I'm slowly getting back into it. Yeah, had a little break last few like in the off season, and now back into it, and and we're all playing regularly. Hope trying to get out there weekly and and give it to each other. What are the uh, what are the courses like in New Zealand? 
Beautiful, very nice out here. Nice and soft with all the the rain and wind, so it keeps it nice and and soft. But yeah, we're all we all signed up at a course nearby the training ground, so we all try to get out there once a week and and have a hit. Nice team bonding. Yeah. All right, mates, you did that too easily. So let's move into the second game I like to play, which is called Two Touch. So basically, I'll give you a topic or a word or a couple of words. And just in two words, you tell me uh, your thoughts, hopefully without thinking too much, is what pops straight into your head. If you give yep. me any words, I'm fine with that. It's quite often. Yep. Sometimes the VAR gets it wrong. You beat the offside trap. So I'm happy to wave play on if I need <laughs> to. But, um, you ready to go? Yep, ready to go. Talking during a movie? Not on. Okay, you're not a fan at all. So what about, is this at the cinemas, even at home, if the wife starts asking you who's that character, is, have we pl- oh. seen the movie before, it's just not on? Got to be paying attention, and especially in the movies, if I'm, I'm zoned <laughs> in, don't, don't, don't be chirping in my ear. I just I, I need to watch my movie, especially if it's one of those, the Marvel movies and stuff like that. I need to be just zoned in on them. And At home, a little bit, I'll give it a little bit more leniency, but out in the movies, uh, it's silence. So what happens though if I, if someone's just if it's someone with you okay maybe you can try what about if it's someone a couple of rows back who's trying to impress his girlfriend on his first date or whatever no. what's I'll, that do? I'll do the old like pretend look back like I'm angry but I won't actually say anything I just act like the tough one but I won't actually do anything <laughs> <laughs> All right Well fuck Talley switched on Okay So uh is this the first time you've ever been coached by him Yes Okay so what's uh, what makes him unique uh, his tactical side of the game. Okay. Very, um, very. I was very impressed walking out. I remember, I'll tell you a story, the first video meeting um, at the club this preseason, we got together, a few of the new boys, and he wanted to ex- explain the structure and things like that. And, and always looking at, in the past, playing against Wellington, you sort of have an idea. And I walked out of that meeting and I was like, I had no idea but in the past about this structure. And then he looked at me and he goes, you got it? I said, not really. And he goes, you will, but so structurally and tactically, it's uh, in depth and detail. And you probably walked away from that meeting going, I made the right decision, come to the Phoenix. Yeah, 100%. And even Scotty, when he first came out, he said the same thing. His first video meeting was like, wow. And you, I remember walking out of the meeting like, wow, a lot of detail. And if you get it right, you just know where players are going to be. Well, mid to late 20s, right? You're not going to be learning much in football. So if you've walked into a room and walked out with more than you went in with, that's a that's a unique situation, right? So yeah, it's mind-blowing for you because usually you go in and you might take one small thing out of something someone's told you because you've been around the traps. You know yeah. it, you've seen, been around you know the Aussie setup. You've been around big clubs in the A-League and to walk out of that, it must have gone like blow your mind. Yeah, it was it was actually eye-opening to say like because I've said to people when you play Wellington in the past and you know the, the system, but then when you – Actually, in the system, it's a completely different to what you actually see from the outside, which was refreshing. Okay, nice. Sushi. Katsu curry. Okay, so you're a fan. Yeah, I like a good katsu curry. All right, so uh, where do you go? Is there somewhere now? in I, I know in, in, in obviously in Sydney there was is quite a few good places, but is there good places in New Zealand? Yeah, there's this one um, uh, not far from me where we live, but the best one I ever had was in Newcastle um, out at New Lambton, and that was religiously once a week with the boys. So, yeah, big fan of a katsu curry. What about the wife? Do you, is that is that a date night, the sushi, or is that uh, just a boys' night out? Nah, I think that's a – she's not a massive fan of the katsu, so I'll, I'll uh, get it when she's at work or something like that and bring it home. <laughs> Very cool. Karaoke? Uh, sometimes. Can you sing? No, nah, but I'll give it a crack. Yeah. What's it, what's yeah. what's your genre? What do you like? What sort of music do you listen to? A um, bit of everything. Um, so initiation song, I've done it once or twice. So this year I did a bit of Backstreet Boys. Um, if not. So, yeah, yeah, I'll get up. If I have to do it, I'll do I it. it's fantastic. But I won't, uh, I won't get up voluntary to do it, but I will do it um, so I don't have to pay the fine sort of thing as well. Please tell me someone's got this on video. No, most clubs I've been at, there's no phones or card. Who do I have to chase for this? No, nah, I think there's – I'd love to get you, my hands on this. Usually, uh, even at Newcastle, no phones allowed, so it's sort of an in-house thing, which is which is good to see. So, And it's a way to get up there and embarrass yourself the maximum you can. So anything you do with the boys is normal after that. So I, I'm, I'm quite for it within the team environment. Mate, I'd love to see it. And, look, I understand why because – there's some players who, you know, would say it's kind of like, you know, if you're trying to get in a fight and someone's holding you back, but you're kind of letting them hold you back. And some <laughs> people will say, oh, I can't believe you've released it, but they love every second where there's some people who would really be upset by it, right? So you, you just couldn't risk it. You wouldn't know who would be happy with it. And yeah. Faking it. So, yeah, I, look, I totally agree. But 
like I said, I'd just love to be a fly on a wall. Next time there's a, there's a one, I'd just love somehow to be able to get myself in there just to watch one of these guys. Yeah, they're, 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 it's quite a fun night when the boys get up and, and do it because you obviously get a different range of players, players that have been around, players that are doing it for the first time, and then staff as well. So it's a good way to, to break the ice and, and just embarrass yourself, really. Golf. I know we've touched on this previously, but... Uh... Tough sport. Okay, is that uh, is that your favourite? Like now, I know a lot of because it's not as physical on the body. There's a lot of uh, footballers who play golf, and that's a good thing. Is that is that the next sport you go to, or is it just because it's easy on the body, or is there another sport that you enjoy just as much? That just- uh, golf golf would be my go to outside of football because I like going there um, and just switching off and don't even think about football. So that's sort of where I switch off. And and growing up, oh, like even during COVID and stuff, got into it a lot with the old man, which was good. It was just a good bonding with my brother as well. So it was just, it's just somewhere where we go just to switch off. And, and it's challenging. It's it's one day you're you're playing unbelievable the next day you go again and you're terrible so it's it's like it's a way to do something to relax and but also get better at it and challenge yourself now that might be for you mine's the latter i'm always terrible terrible and terrible so, you know, <laughs> one day i'm good and one day i'm bad and one day i'm terrible and the next day i'm even more terrible but uh look it is still a fun sport is somewhere like st andrews playing on a course like that is that on your bucket list um i'd love to play pebble beach okay that would be one of the the courses i'd love to play but yeah, like uh, I remember I went with Jack Rodwell last year to, I think it's called the New South Wales out um, in, near the city. So that was a beautiful course, probably one of the best I've played in Sydney. So I like it, trying new courses and, and experiencing new courses because it's, it's fun. Like you sometimes you get sick of playing the same old course, but trying new ones is always, is always good. Nice. November World Cup. Very different. Your fan, not a fan. Look, look at all the players going down, right? They're trying to jam too many games into a period of time. Marnes has gone down. There's Pogba and a few others all missing now because they're trying to put the players through the ringer now. I, I don't think I'd ever say there's too much football, but when the players start to really, you know, 11 games into a Premier League season, you're having to rest people because they're, they're tired and fatigued. It means yeah. the players too hard, right? So you w- would you never experiment with this again it will be a great world cup we're hoping but would you never experiment with the out of june july world cup again don't don't think so because when you look at the past those world cups even the euros they're always in the off season and it gives gives players throughout the year something to work to and i think coming into into the season it's it's sort of 11 games and players are getting picked off the last 11 games whereas previously it's been the best players the whole year as well and things like that so i think and obviously, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about things around the World Cup, but I think it's it's a tough period because you only get those week or two before the the see, the World Cup starts. So I think there could be, when you look at it, a lot more upsets. So that side of things might be a bit more exciting, but then also you're missing out on a lot of big players going to the World Cup, which is also a downside of it. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, personally, I'd prefer it. The old, the old way in the off season of plays, and it's something that everyone can enjoy and watch. They may get lucky because of the fact that you've got so many, uh, you know, superstars of the game potentially retiring at the same time. So there's there's talk of Neymar joining, you know, Messi and Ronaldo and Modric and Neo yeah. and all these sorts of guys. So you might get an OYA. So you might get, uh, you know, lucky because you have that. But I'm with you. I think go back to the traditional way. Go back to when it's right. Go back where the players get a chance to have a break and come in fresh rather than come in and, you know, they've been playing Champions League football and, you know, domestic football and it's just a lot on the body. Yeah, I think also it gives teams – it's a World Cup. It's the biggest stage in the world. You want to have at least two or three weeks leading with the team, not just a week or two. You want to have at least two or three games before it starts to build that bond because connections don't form overnight as well. Look, you're going to have to be switching shirts. I know you're going to have the Socceroos jersey, then switching into the Croatian jersey, and then back yeah. in for these games. So you're going to do a few a few kit swaps. But uh, other than the two teams that I know you're you're cheering on, who do you like? If you had to put your money on someone now, who would you like to take it out? Um, obviously, I want to obviously see Croatia do well and and the Socceroos. But if I was looking at it the other way, I, I'd do like Germany. Um, I think they've got a quite a good squad and and the experience with a range of youth as well. So I think they're going to be quite strong as well. Were you tempted to go to the World Cup? If if they said to you now, hey, look, you know, you can take off. With, here's a month. Give you a chance to have your, you know, a, an even better honeymoon than you originally did. Would you go? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Tough question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. If it was somewhere like Europe or 
or a USA or something like that, like either Russia or USA the next one, I would probably jump at it. Yeah, but yeah, Qatar, I'm not sure. Yeah, if it was put in front of me, I probably would take it just to watch a few games and stuff like that. I'm with you. As much as it's the greatest uh, spectacle on earth, it depends on where it's at. And I remember uh, a few months ago, I was talking to Mark Arena about it and he said, oh, I'll be going to Mexico and uh, USA. And I said, I don't know what tour you're going on, but I'm coming. So if yeah. you guys played in the World Cup at a venue where there's other things to dis- distract you and, and, and entertain you, then I'm in, count me in. Yeah, that's what it is. I think the outside around it as well isn't quite important. What there is to do outside of the football, just for a bit of an experience as well. VAR. No comment. <laughs> Mate, uh, look, I'll, I'll give you a couple of extra words here so that I don't throw you under the bus. The one uh, a few weeks ago, the Raw game, where they start saying now you can, once you have a certain number of players in the wall, you have to be yeah. – honest. do they think you guys are going to start to pull out your rule book and start having a check while you're in the middle of a game? Hang on a sec. Let's just freeze the game here and let's just wait. We've got to have a quick read and see what, what rules – just make it simple, right? Yeah, like obviously losing that grand final as well, taking it that far back, that was the original start of it where it sort of put me on the backside of it and that was the first experience I really had with it. And yeah, like I said, we need to just speed up the games and sometimes the process takes too long. If it's quite obvious, just lift your flag up as well and things like that. It's, yeah, it's for me, just bring back football sort of thing, like just keep things flowing. So there's no hope of uh, when you hang the boots up after your great career, you're going to go into become a VAR? No? Nah. Definitely not. <laughs> I think oh, when you look around the world, how many ex players become referees? So credit to them. They they do cop a lot, and and to be fair, like in the past, I was quite uh, angry at them in in games, and now when I look back at it, they they don't deserve that that treatment, and they do a job that they're there for, and they do well at it, and everyone's going to make mistakes. So obviously, you just got to move on. Nice cover up. <laughs> and final question: away games. Love them. Who's your favourite? Uh, who's your favourite? Now that you've been at three different clubs in the A League, which is your favourite away game? Is it based on the stadium, facilities, fans? Who's your favourite? Um, I do love playing at Amy Park. It's probably one of my favourite fields. Um, and yeah, Victory obviously got the the good fans, and and especially last year playing down there, and then scoring a penalty and and celebrating in front of them coughed a bit of stick. But just that atmosphere was was amazing, and just Amy Park in general, I do quite enjoy. Mate, last last year and I suppose a few seasons before when they were having more success, it reminded me a lot of Europe, you know, watching their games when the crowds are there. And that's ideally what we want to bring here, right? So yeah. the other players, it's just the atmosphere and getting more more people to games and getting that hype around like there is around the rest of the world. So whatever they're doing there, I think we need to replicate. Um, you know, there's great things going on, obviously, at the Phoenix now and having a women's team there and getting back into New Zealand. That's another side. And there's, you know, City and a few others. I think there's just a few clubs around that need to watch those blueprints yep. and copy those to try and get everyone up to the same level and that's you know happened in the big leagues around the world you know the cities and that with no cap they spend more money which pushes others to increase their standard as well exactly i think if you everyone's forced to spend money the league's just going to grow and and like i said those fans down there are quite excellent and and if the whole league can follow that and and clubs are which is good to see and it's just going to grow the game domestically I know you're a busy man, so I really appreciate your time. I wish you all the best uh, on the weekend in your final game before the World Cup. I also wish the Socceroos and Croatia good luck for you. So you've got a, a, a each way bet there. At least hopefully one, <laughs> someone, someone can finish in the placings. I also hope that uh, you get invited to the Barbarossa's family <laughs> Christmas. If you don't, then you can blame me. And look, mate, you got to invite at my place anytime you want. I'm not a bad cook, so uh, you got to invite here anytime. And mate, enjoy exploring New Zealand with your new wife. But uh, mate, I wish you all the best for the rest of the season. I'll, I'll definitely keep in touch. And uh, mate, I just hope things work out for you over in New Zealand. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And yeah, looking forward to the rest of the year and and look forward to chatting again. Mate, most certainly. Take care. Thank you. Take it easy. You're listening to the Football Revolution. Welcome back to the show. It was fantastic speaking with uh, Phoenix star Stephen Yagarkovich, and we thank him very much for his time. Up now, as promised, and I know we're both a bit excited about this, we are going to start to talk about our World Cup Beely Awards. So, um... The tournament opened with host Qatar. They were beaten 2-0 by Ecuador, both goals coming in the opening 45 minutes. And the home fans had seen enough with thousands leaving at the interval. Well, I wasn't sure if anyone was there because they were all dressed in white. So, like, I wasn't sure if they were seats or, or fans, but um, they did leave early and Qatar put in a, a pretty dismal performance, didn't they? And, and you know, credit to Ecuador. They were clinical. Uh, Anna Valencia was was gone up top. He could have had a few more goals. So, um, 
You yeah, need, they're, they're, they're a quality side. So. You need you need a bit of trouble then at one of those games so that you, if they start uh, causing problems, then you can tell the difference between the seats and the people, right? <laughs> All right, so um, we get our first look at the three Lions, the Flying Dutchman and Messi's Argentina amongst other teams in the next few days before Australia face their first extremely difficult assignment on Wednesday against the powerful French. So uh, for the French, Ballon d'Or winner Karim uh, Benzema joins Pogba and Kante on an injured list for the current holders. What are your thoughts on, uh, I think, uh, good-looking Jarouz come in? So if, you, if you're going for looks, then it's a oh, very nice ten replacement. Out, ten out of ten if you're going for looks. Um, <laughs> but, but as in football ability, you can't go much further than the guy who was absolutely superlative last year. Yeah, look, it's a uh, f- first of all, it's 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 great great for the Socceroos, but second of all, it's it's terrible news for the tournament. You know, having the best player in the world for the last twelve months uh, miss the tournament through injury, um, it's it's a real shame. He's a, he's a quality player. He's a, I've said it for for years now. He's a he's a number he's a, he's got a, he's a number ten in a number nine's body, but he's just a, he's just unbelievable. He can score goals. He's silky. He can set up goals. He brings players into the game. Um, they they're going to miss him a lot. But when they do. They, they do when have they a, say good news for Australia, when you lose, I want to lose with the best, right? I want the best it, taking me out. I want to say I lost to a team that had Benzema or we beat a team. You don't want to say we had a one or a draw, but they, and then oh, but they're missing this guy and that the guy. So look, unfortunately, you take the cards you're drawn. Australia can't force these guys to play injured, but um, it, it's better when for me, I'd much rather go out and t- test myself against the best. Yeah, hundred percent. And and you, you want to play against the best players in the world, and he's right up there with the with the best. So it's a shame that. Um, it's a shame for, for the Socceroos players that they won't get to play against him and, and test themselves against him, especially for the defenders. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it is, it is what it is. He's, he's injured. He can't, he can't compete. Um, and, you know, they've, they've got some top quality players uh, that can replace him. You know, I think Giroud is probably going to start for, for them. Um, but they've got players like Dembele on the bench. Um, you know, so they're, they're, they're stacked. They're stacked up top. They've got one of the the best attacking, um, you know, the best attacking players in in the competition. So um, they're, they're going to be dangerous no matter who plays. So we're, we're going to have to be, you know, at our best. We're going to be at 110. Um, percent Look one step forward though. So okay, we we think that they'll still be able to have enough uh, firepower to be able to get out of the group. But how? Uh, there's no doubts how great a player he is. But how badly does that affect their long term chances of going back to back? Is it a big massive blow? I think the, the deeper they go in the tournament, the, the more they, they will, you know, they would have relied on him. I think because but he's, not just he's rely on him, but then if things aren't going your way, Giroud, uh, Giroud comes on with twenty to go. Now it's somebody else coming on, right? So it affects it's a snowball effect, right? Yeah, hundred hundred percent. So you know they're, they're going to have to um, change their game plan a bit and, and their tactics a little bit. But look, they've, they've still got uh, you know tremendous amounts of quality. Oh, I don't. I don't see it being a huge issue for them if the, if they go deep into the tournament, or if you are like I said, someone that believes in magic, maybe the voodoo is out. Because as we said, right, Germany, Spain, they've all gone out. They'd love to add France stage. to that list, right? They go out the group stage after winning the World Cup. So, no better way than the voodoo doctor to get the Ballon d'Or winner out of your forward line, right? That really plays into <laughs> into oh, yeah. going out the straight sets. Arnie's been doing a few dances over in Qatar. I, I don't know what they've been doing, but uh, yeah, look, that's another big name and, and another thing that, uh, you know, has gone wrong with this World Cup. But look, the show goes on. Um, the Socceroo side of things, having lost winger Martin Boyle, um, but this hands an opportunity young gun Marco Tilio. How much does this affect the Socceroos? Yeah, look, cool. I know it's not, one, a, Benzema, one, one, it's not one, a Benzema effect, but... Yeah, Boyle's been an important uh, part of our puzzle, part of the team for, for the last, you know, four years, this whole qualifying campaign. Um, he, he probably started more matches than, than not. So um, he, he's a huge, huge omission. Um, he, he just hasn't been right all, all season, really. So um, the, the knee troubles have, have succumbed. He's succumbed to the knee troubles. But, um, you know, as I say, one door closes, another one opens. And, and we spoke about Tilio being, um, you know, a bit stiff, not, not making this initial 26-man squad. Um, you know, he's a tremendous player. He's an impact player. Um, it just means that, you know, someone else is going to have to start. I think it may be Craig Goodwin. Um, 
play him on the left and, and maybe Lecky on the right and, and Duke up top or, or McLaren. Um, so he gives an opportunity to, to Goodwin, who's in tremendous form at the moment, probably the most informed uh, attacking players out, out of out of the lot. So um, gives him a chance to, to step in. Um, it's a shame that, that Boyle won't be there, but it also gives a chance to Tilio. Um, you know, we can use him as impact player off the bench, I think. He has been probably one of the most effective players we've had playing in a European competition in the last, I mean, two years. So every time you watched him, he's been in excellent form for Scot- uh, in Scottish League. Then I know he disappeared somewhere and then he's come back again and, Maybe he hasn't hit the same heights, but uh, yeah, like I said, we were really counting on him. He's been our go-to man or one of our major go-to men for the last four years, and so it is a big blow, but uh, look, there has to be an opportunity. Like I said, if France have, have, have just taken it on the chin. You have to take it on the chin, right, and move on into these games, and you can only play with the, the players that are fit and ready to go, right? Yeah, definitely. Look, it's 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 not the first injury, uh, not the first player that's had to pull out. It's and you know might not be the last. There, there'll there'll be more injuries throughout the tournament, so you never want to see it. Um, you always want your best players playing out there, but um, it is what it is, and and we move on, and, and it gives a, a tremendous opportunity to young Marco Tilio. Okay, with only one match played before this week's show, our yearly awards will launch next week fully, um, and we'd love to hear from you about which nomination for each category you like. So, uh, Vig and I will both nominate for the five categories. Uh, our selection for that week um, and each week we'll go through and the audience will tell us who they thought uh, got it right in each of those categories and might also give us bragging rights to see um, who got more right and who who was the better judge but uh, then at the end of uh, the World Cup we'll have our awards of who took out our each of our Peely awards uh, for each of the categories but uh, just a quick update for the the, uh, the people following on at home so this came about based on the 1995 I know it was a long time ago now but uh, Ameri- say, what 1995? 1995 Jeez. American comedy uh, Kicking and Screaming starring Will Ferrell and Robert Duval. And uh, part of the bet they made on a football tournament is the father's Peely Ball. So we will put some footage up to have, let you have a look and see. And uh, especially if you're a parent, uh, which we both are, you'll get a laugh out of it because uh, the father caught the Peely Ball in the crowd, the Pele Ball, as it should be said, um, and didn't want to give it to his son. So he kept it. So anyway, this will this will unravel a bit more. It'll make more sense as you go along. But uh, our Peely Awards, we'll just run through them quickly. So as of next week, we'll We'll both have nominations for these um, and we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. You might even have something outside of uh, what VIG and I have uh, come up with and we're totally open to that. That's why we love football and everyone has an opinion on it. So the first one is our best goal award and we've called it the Double Ronnie. So obviously uh, Ronaldo, the one with the uh, the crazy ass fringe, uh, he 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 uh, who dominated World Cups for many years. You want the Ronaldo haircut? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, Ronaldo. He's the uh, the Brazilian version. He's the second on the all time World Cup uh, top goal scorers list with fifteen. And uh, the second half of the double, Ronnie, is a guy also named uh, known as uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I think he's only got a couple of billion followers on socials. And Who's that? Uh, yeah, there's some guy. Some uh, he's the new breed with seven goals. So and, and he's hoping to add to that and close, uh, get, get a little bit uh, closer to uh, uh, Ronaldo, who's on 15. So... And that, a little bit closer to uh, Miroslav closer. Yeah, he, Mir- Miroslav's on 16, Cristiano, Ren- uh, Ronaldo's on 15, and then uh, Cristiano back on seven, But and there's a few players in between. But our best goal will be known as the Double Ronnie. The second award we'll be giving out is our best save, which will be known as our Safe as a Banks. So uh, Gordon Banks, the England goalkeeper, one of the greatest keepers to have lived and forever remembered for what is widely regarded as the greatest save of all time to deny uh, Pelé another World Cup goal in 1970. So probably fits in with our Peely Awards uh, that he's he's best the best save of all time, or his even best save was against uh, Pele or Peely. So um, safe as a bank. I wonder what his interest rates are, are at the moment. Safe as a bank. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't mind putting some money in there and uh, and, and getting a return on that. Uh, even so, more so if he was around playing these days than back then when he was probably on twenty bucks a week. So what England could uh, do with him, couldn't they? Oh, they would definitely love to have a keeper like him. Now the next one is something outrageous, which we have called our Maradona kebab. So um, arguably the greatest of all time, and there's no disrespect respect to him because I love him and I think he's absolutely fantastic and I miss that he's not here anymore and I miss him more that we don't get to watch him play. We don't get to see him at the World Cup watching. Yeah, we don't get to see him at the World Cup so it is a sad time but uh, we thought we'd uh, make it a little bit of a fun thing. You know, sometimes when someone passes you say it's not a funeral or, a, you know, something where you're going to be sad. It's a celebration of uh, of the person. So we're celebrating him, arguably the greatest of all time. Uh, in a matter of minutes, he scored the most controversial goal of all time followed by the most incredible beating most of the England team. So this award will be for something that was just absolutely outrageous, whether it be good or bad. So it will be our Maradona Kebab Award. Our fourth award 
Yeah, do you want to? No, I'm, yeah. I'm just hungry already. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't mind a Maradona kebab. It won't be long until someone opens up one of these, will they? And then they can steal our we, copyright. We've got to trademark, trademark that. <laughs> I think we would. We've got plenty of those in the tank, but so they can borrow a few hours if they like. Uh, Nick, we'll see at the World Cup. There'll be the guys over there from SBS, and they'll say, we've just gone and got ourselves a Maradona kebab. And I'll say, that's all right. You're welcome. <laughs> our fourth award is our only in guitar so different time of year no beer something you can only see here so pretty much this leaves it open for us this is kind of a, a um you know a open season a bit of uh we can choose whatever we see in there that's just something that's uh it could be bad good indifferent might just you know something that you have to talk about or something everyone's talking about but uh what else have they done that's uh different in the world cup besides that they uh they've put it in uh, november close to christmas instead of june or july and that they, they promise beer and then it's the pub with no beer is there anything else major they changed uh air conditioned stadiums yeah and the players have to play in inside out outfits is that part of the yeah, uh, changed you, you it gotta so run, no sponsors. you gotta run backwards no the whole time <laughs> no, no sponsors on the kit no no nothing so. yeah so only guitar is uh only in guitar is our fourth award and our fifth which we just love because uh, it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter what language they speak doesn't matter what uh, country we're in or what league we're watching the vavana the var and officiating stuff ups right it happens every week we hope to god that we uh, go into an a-league round and we don't have to talk about it but there's just uh, time and time again you've got one simple Simple job. Your simple job is to watch 10 seconds worth of footage. Now, you don't have to find the 10 seconds in the 94 it's minutes. right there. They give it to you. They give you the 10 seconds yeah. and they say to you, here's 10 angles of it. All you have to decide is, did it, did it hit his head, his hand, his foot, and they still get it wrong. And then they go and ask for help and they call a friend and it's just absolutely embarrassing. Now, I don't know. I'm guessing they're on good coin. So they should be doing a, good, a better job than that. Look, my excuse is I do a rubbish job on the show because I get paid jack, right? So that's my excuse. You you might get paid a bit more, so you do a good job. But usually, if you're getting paid good money, you should you shouldn't. You've got to you, produce. You yeah. should be feel guilty yeah, you if you're if produce. you're getting paid excellent money and you can't even do your job right, and you have to four times a game look at ten seconds worth of footage, less than a minute, and you can't get it right. Just sack yourself. You don't have to even have to watch the game. You just watch the replay. <laughs> That's all you have to right? do. You have your feet up half the time just eating. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't know what's going on. So, yeah, they're, they're our five awards. So, our best goal, the double Ronnie, best save, safe as a Banks, something outrageous, the Maradona kebab, uh, our – only in guitar, so pretty much our open season there is pretty much anything that we just grab that we love that we think was interesting or everyone's talking about. And then our VAR and officiating stuff ups our Vava Na. Which one's your favourite award? God, I'm looking forward to the, the Maradona kebab. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to see some outrageous goals. I want to see some. I'm going the double Ronnie. The I double, love the double, the double Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah, the two footed, the two footed double Ronnie. Double Ronnie, we could turn that into a burger as well, something like that. We could, mate. We've got a whole menu here. I think the way we're going, only in guitar, it comes with no beer, so you get an empty glass, right? So that's Heineken zero percent. <laughs> yeah, zero nothing. There's a, there's a sponsor. There we go. All right. So um, just before we get into our clinical finish, our uh, finale of the show, uh, this week's show, let's quickly have a snapshot at uh, – I know the, the World Cup's already started and Group A is already underway, but I never had uh, – uh, I didn't have Qatar going through either. Anyway. No. Yeah, it wouldn't matter if they, they played got, all three games or no games. Qatar, they've got a few broken strings, mate. <laughs> it is true. So, look, let's get into Group Group A. We can take it in turns here and just say if we agree or not agree, and if not, just uh, tell us the adjustments. So, Group A is uh, Ecuador, Netherlands, Senegal, and Qatar – I already had uh, Ecuador and Netherlands going through, probably not in that order, probably the Dutch first, Ecuador second, but uh, I like Senegal until I heard that uh, Mane is not 100% and then I didn't like their chances. So they've got some good stuff across the park. Do you agree with Netherlands and Ecuador? Yeah, look, I, I think I think Netherlands topped the group and, and now Ecuador have won their first game. Uh, Senegal, no Mane. Um, it's going to is be he definitely not playing? He's, he's definitely he's been ruled out. So def- definitely they're, they're going to struggle. They've still got some um, quality in Koulibaly in that, but I think he was that yeah. X factor. Oh, it was like when the previous you t- World you Cup, take the main player out of your out of your squad when he's you know, uh, Salah pulled out, and everyone said, "Oh yeah, they're still a good team. They qualified." No, you just lost a guy that's probably worth two to three goal goal assi- goals and, and I, a couple of assists. And I, I think that's going to have an effect on the other players as well. I think it's going to put a dampener on on their World Cup. I guess not being able to play with uh, Sadio Mane. All right, so let's move into Group B, which starts. Uh, tomorrow morning. Who do you like there? <sighs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tip USA and Wales to go through. 
Oh, I'm saying England are uh, the big flops of this tournament. The good news is when uh, the English all ride in or they call up and they start abusing us, I won't understand what they're saying, right? Hopefully they've had a few beers Whoa. and they'll be saying, it's worry, worry. That, that's, that they're going to give you a hard time. But you know what? You did call Western United. This is the bad news for English fans. You did call Western United last year's champions who have great quality across the park, who were excellent last year, that you said they won't make the six this year in a competition of six teams. No, there's 12, isn't there? Yeah. But um, you called it and they're, they've only had their first win just before um, the, the international break or the World Cup break. Yeah, so look, if, if England don't get a win after three games, then sayonara, they're going home. Well, the funny thing is... That's- it's not coming home if they get knocked out in the group stage, but it's I don't home. think you're coming home either no. because I think the bombs are going to find you and belt the – They might be out of you. They'll, they'll come out of you. <laughs> All right, look, for me, I'm going to say uh, England and Wales to go through. So I think uh, they'll go through. I, I Like I said, I think the US seem to get this um, free path every every World Cup where I think they need to go into a group where they have more competition and we'll see where they're really at. I know it needs to be that part of the world. I know that's where they're from and all this sort of thing, but I just reckon that they – for a team that has had has been around a lot of World Cup, so I think they get a pretty easy pass. So for me, I'd like to see them work a bit harder. But for, uh, for me, I'd say England and Wales. I know we've all forgot about Iran here. They may stick it up us and say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. But look, that could happen. And if they do, it, it hats could. Off look, to them. It's in the Middle East. Uh, they're acclimatised. They're used to those conditions. But I just can't see them getting out of that group. Well, look, the funny thing is when you say acclimatised, I thought that maybe my, my roughies or my dark horses would be a team from, uh, from the Middle East or from Africa because of the heat. But I've been told their air con there is better than uh, five star hotels in Australia. So I don't know who's paying the electricity bills. Good luck with that one. Maybe they're putting well, it on the their The problem is when you go to a five-star hotel, you can never get the aircon right. It's <laughs> okay. either too cold or too hot. It is true. Right? You, know, you walk into the room, you're freezing. You, you turn it off. You, you come back, you know, a couple of hours later, you go back in and, and it's it's boiling hot. you got to turn it back on. You're too cold. You can't win, mate. All right, let's get into Group C. So every neutral fan's uh, favourite team is in this group and that's Messi and uh, Argentina because of the fact that uh, it may be his last and uh, he's, he's done everything in football, right, except for winning a World Cup. So this would top off a, a brilliant career, but there's others in that same sort of boat. Um, comes to mind, Modric, Ronaldo and so on. But for me here, I'm going to go with uh, Argentina and Mexico. Now, I know Poland and a guy called Lewandowski will, will, won't, won't be too happy and they have... Um, he's never scored in a World Cup. He's never scored in the World Cup. Never scored. They also have the assist king at the moment. I think he plays for your club, Napoli. Zelinski. Yeah, Zelinski. Yeah, he's been he's, absolutely he's a great player. Moment. Great player. I, I just like uh, I just like Argentina to go through, but I, look, I think Mexico will top the group, and I think Argentina will come through second, which will mean they've got a hard path. So if they can win it, he hasn't just won it; he's won it in style, right? Because they've taken the back path. If you're going to, you're going to, if you're going to take, take, if you're going to win it, you're going to take out the best teams, right? Go the back so roads with bare feet. Might as well Tough. do it the hard way. Yeah. So what about you? Do you agree with that? Uh, I agree with Argentina. I think Argentina will, will get out of this group. Uh, with Mexico, I don't. I don't. I just don't think they have a, a strong enough squad, and, and they were pretty poor in, in qualifying as well. So, um, I'm going to throw a massive smoky out in this one, and I'm going to say Saudi Arabia are going to get out of this group with. I think they're going to have they're going to they're going to take four points. They're going to beat Mexico or Poland and, and draw with one of them, and they'll lose to Argentina. So I don't know what the um, the, the official uh, draw the drawer is for these for this World Cup. I know it used to be the octopus, and there's been other things in that. If you get Saudi Arabia through to the knockout phase and send England packing home. Huge. They're going to get you. No, they're going to get you to oh, go and start. Someone's doing... going to come out of you. No, I'm telling you, they're going to they're going to call you up from Qatar and they're going to say we need you to come over and we're going to have Josh the I don't know put me in a tank and yeah. just have me swimming around. Hundred percent, and you maybe in your speedos you can take your son with you because he likes ripping his gear off and yeah, look, you can swim around and just tell us who you think. Hold some signs up to the if window. If that happens, budgie smuggler, if you're if you're listening, <laughs> throw me throw me a pair, please. All right, I'm going to give you the group that uh, I know you're loving. So Group D, who do you like here? <laughs> This is this is tough because uh, look. Don't sit on the fence here, mate. It, it's it's going to be it's a it's an extremely difficult group for Australia. I, I think I think France and Denmark. Are, so is the curse are is, top, is the uh, Egyptian curse here of uh, never getting through? It's not going to come into play here. You think? Uh, I, I just I can't see it happening. I, honestly, I can't see it. Ha- even even with without Benzema, um, I, I can't see France not not getting out of this group. Um, Who gets out with them? It's it's a flip of the coin between Australia and Denmark. Um, so France to go through as the uh, as first uh, place, and then either Australia or Denmark to I, take second I, spot. I, I actually think I, I I could be hugely wrong. I think Denmark might top the group, and France might finish second. Okay. It, it, look, Wednesday morning is huge for, for us here. Um, if we can get something out of that game miraculously, if we can do something, 
you know, we, we're going to have to be at our best, and France are going to have to be at their worst for us to get anything out of that game. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with what we've always done, which is we speak 100 percent the truth. I am going to go with Denmark and France as well. As much as I'd love to see the Socceroos through, and there's no team in the tournament, especially with Italy not there, that I'd love to see prove me wrong more and send me messages saying you're a clown, you don't know what you're talking about. I'd love those messages. Look, I, I look forward I, I, to. If, if I get egg on my face from this, yeah, I will I'll, I'll take it. I would too. But I, the thing is, we call it as we see it, and the honest truth is, I don't see it at the moment. But I also um, have got. There's a lot of friends of the show, Goodwin and Tilio and so on, you know, that we've had on the show, oh, and Redmayne and so on. That we're well, hoping we, because well, we like these guys. I've got my guys. fingers crossed under the yeah. table that that we can pull off something miraculous and, and get out of this group. It's going to be extremely difficult. And, you know, that, that's just the reality of where Australia are at the moment. Um, there's no hiding from it. France France are an unbelievable squad, uh, squad uh, world champions. Um, and, and Denmark, you know, they, they were lucky not to make it through to the final of the Euros. So. And hello from Tunisia. There's, they're also oh, in the group. Just, what, are, what, just are they, so what are they doing down there? <laughs> just so you know, uh, there's also a team in there called Tunisia. Look, if they so. make it out of the group, that'll be a, a dead set miracle as well. So, yeah, look, stranger things have happened, but it's going to be it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult. All right, let's move into Group E. So, Group E is Germany, Japan, Spain, and Costa Rica. Uh, only a brave man here would go against the powerhouses of uh, Germany and Spain. Germany haven't been at their best the last few years. Uh, Spain, I think, lack a striker, but we're not talking about going all the way here and winning the tournament. We're just talking about getting out of your, your suitcase, getting out of the group you're in, right, and just and just getting out into the uh, free open land of a knockout phase. So for me, I'm not quite sure what order, but if I had to be pushed on it, I'd probably say for consistency, Germany go through as the, the group winners uh, with Spain. So it's not a, a surprise. It's not a great shock or it's not like I'm, I'm a great judge, but uh, that's where I think I'd go. But I do think that Japan and Costa Rica will make it harder for both these teams and people to think that think it will be. Yeah, look, and, and look, I think we need to remember, I think South Korea beat Germany last, last World Cup. So, um, yeah, look, it's, it's an interesting group. It's, it's a very difficult group. Uh, I just don't think Japan are in great form at the moment. Um, I think they lost to Canada two one the other the other day. So um, Co- Costa Rica, I can't really see them doing much in the group. But you know, it, for me, it's between Spain, Germany, and Japan. And and at the moment, I've got to go Spain and Germany. Okay, so that order: Spain first, Germany second. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Spain. I, I actually think they're going to finish on the same points. So it will come down to. Um, I don't know if it goes goal difference or um, head to head first, but mate, if they them- finish on if they finish on the same points, honestly, I, I, I don't know if I can even face you again. All right, so the next group uh, is uh, Group F. You want to lead us through that one? Yeah, so we have got Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. Um, <sighs> Oh, this is this is this is difficult. I, I think. So, do do you like here that? And, and I know that yeah, you know, you're big on analysing all this. Do you like here that the last few major tournaments, Belgium have been talked up, right? Everyone's saying Belgium, Belgium. Their time has to come. This is their golden generation. They've got all so, these players, and they're not saying anything. They're about talking Belgium, them down right? now, yeah, because they've talking. been disappointing in the last couple of major tournaments, right? They have, but so, when you still look across the board, right? Okay, they lose probably their biggest name player in the last few years. Uh, he's gone to Madrid, and I think he's forgotten that he he has to play real football and he just wants to play FIFA and eat takeaway but they just send his brothers now that's what I'm saying I, I think I think the, the Hazard brother is he, he's uh, Thorgan he's fantastic um, Lukaku's good as long as he's not playing in the Premier League so he's fine he's he's alright so they, they got plenty of, Courtois was amazing last year for Real Madrid so we there, forget about the quality there's no, there's no denying the quality they have and the talent but you know it's 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 a, it's a tough group and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say they go through with Canada are you going to say uh, Croatia don't get so through? I'm saying Croatia don't get out of this group. I honestly, I don't know what I bet you, but I think there's no. Ch- I wouldn't care what group Canada's in. I don't reckon Canada's getting out of any group. I don't care if I dropped them in. Oh. I don't care if I picked them up now, flew across the middle of the uh, the draw, and just dropped them in anywhere. I, I've got no time for Canada, and it's not anything against uh, them personally. I, just I got think no they, time they were the best the best team in uh, Concacaf qualifying. Um, they've got Alfonso Davies who plays in a more attacking role. Um, I think they're going to be. Yeah, it's gonna, 11, I think it's eleven gonna, aside. Not honestly, one, I think, not one aside. I think they're going to surprise people. Okay, so you're going with uh, Belgium and Canada and uh, the nine, uh, the two thousand and eighteen runners up. They're not even going to get out their group. I don't think so. No. So, you're, so this this could be a new curse. So it could be the runners up. The, the, the curse of the runners up. up. The curse of the runners up. So we're going to start. I've started. New. I've started yeah. a new trend. All right. I'm, go. I'm going Belgium and Croatia. I can't go past them. And to be honest, I reckon even Morocco will finish higher than Canada. So there's that. All right. All right. Let's go into Group G, where everyone's talking about it. The uh, the, the the hottest thing. The it's it's the, it's the coolest thing to say. Who do you who do you think's going to win the World Cup? Brazil. Who's going to be runners up? Oh, Brazil B. And who's going to make the semis? Oh, Brazil C. They've got enough depth to have three sides that all qualify and make it to the semifinals of the World Cup if it was a possibility. 
Um, they've got so much depth to players they've left behind. And, you know, what's probably a really encouraging sign for the Brazil team is when they showed footage of people like Anthony getting told that they were in the squad and watching oh, how that, much that, it means that, that's That's probably the best thing, um, the reaction from the families and, and everyone sitting in front of the television and, and the announcement going out to the whole nation. And, um, they're, and they're really that, that's, going to discuss that's incredible. what's the that's, best sport in the world. That's and incredible. you watch that and they're oh, really going to sit there's there. No, there's, there's, there's no, it's not, it's there's not the even a, there's not even a, a contest. There's a, it's a no contest. That's that's a hundred percent. What do you think happened when they go and tell a player that oh yeah, instead of representing Australia, which you had before, or, or, or playing Origin, you're now going to play for Lebanon in the World Cup because you didn't make this train team. They're going to go yeah, it's the fourth team I've played for in the last World Cup series. It's like how can you compare <laughs> I've got, that? To, I've got grandparents from four different nationalities. Oh, I've, played, yeah. I've played for all four. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We'll get to the stage once in rugby league. They'll say this is the first player ever to make the semi-finals with four different teams. Oh, look, it's a, it's a, <laughs> honestly yeah, it's a no it's, contest. Football oh, yeah. is, the, is the greatest game. Yeah, so so as I said, absolutely amazing. And if if you don't get a rush or a, a you know just this special feeling about football any other time, watching that a player who's on big money uh, go and, and and they're no different to anyone else. They just share it with their family. Um, but moving off the, uh, the the fuzzy nice feel, let's get back to Group G. It's Brazil, Cameroon, Serbia, Switzerland. For me. I think Switzerland, you know, they always say that Switzerland's the, um, you know, the neutral. The neutral. They are neutral because they make every tournament, they never do anything. So for me, I'm going to sit there stuck, and say they're stuck neutral. In neutral. Yeah, they're stuck in neutral. They're, they're almost the shortest price favourites ever to qualify for a World Cup and the shortest price favourites never get out their group. So I'm going uh, Brazil here. And I, look, I was going to say Serbia. But I have to stick with it. I think an African team or a Asian team uh, or a Middle East team will, will go further because of the heat, even if they are saying they got aircon. So I'm going to go Brazil and Cameroon here. All right. No, nice one. Look, I'm going Brazil 100%. They come out of this group. And uh, I'm going to go with Serbia. Yeah, I knew you would. I think you've got some, I reckon you got some intel here. I think you've got a few Serbian friends and that too playing around the MPL with you. Is it, some guys from Bonnie Rig or something? Are you getting someone, some intel? Someone's giving me a hot tip. No, no. Look, <laughs> I, I just I, the red hot tip. I, I think they're they're a good football side. They've had um, they've got a, a lot of young talent uh, coming through, and yeah, I just think. I think they're capable of getting out of this group and, and picking up points against Switzerland and, and Cameroon. All right, the last group, Group H. Take it away. Big group: Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and uh, Korea. So this is going to be this is going to be a tough group um, for me. It's got to be Portugal coming out of this group, and God, it's it's honestly a flip of the coin from the other three. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Uruguay. They're my roughies. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, my roughies. I'm, reckon- not, I'm not confident on it. But you know, Korea. Um, Son Son's been out injured. He's come back. He's he's wearing the face mask. He said he's good to go. But that's that's got to affect the way you play. Having yeah, that thing on your head. If something happens to your money maker, then you got to be a bit careful, yeah. right? Because yeah. he earns all that money because he looks good. If he's got to have still Burberry, if Burberry, he's the man uh, in the eye mask, photo shoots and you're everything. Not getting as many. You're not getting as many uh, endorsement deals. So look after your face. Worry about playing second once your face is all right. And I love Son. Obviously, being a Spurs boy, but uh, I just hope he's fit enough to play in the tournament because without him. They're none of Buckley's. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, that mask better have some few superpowers in it. But yeah, like you, like you said, uh, for me, I, I can't see, I can't go past Portugal, and then I'm, I'm going to say Uruguay after that. Uruguay, my roughies. I think uh, you know every everything has a formula for me. So I love in the Melbourne Cup, and it hasn't been successful the last ten years. But uh, I love the uh, Irish or the European stayers. This is all about for me European, uh, the South American teams. So I like Brazil, I like Argentina, but I like Uruguay. I think Uruguay have got some players in form. You've got but, you know, up front, you've got a, a tried and trusted in someone like Suarez playing alongside a young bull like uh, Darwin Nunes. I think Bentaker at Spurs at the moment is in unbelievable form. Uh, there's also, uh, is it Valverde, the guy that's uh, oh, setting freak. the world on fire? Uh, right? Bentaker, saw him play live, is an unbelievable player. Federico Valverde is, yeah. Yeah, for me, he's up there with the, the top five midfielders in the world. Yeah, so for me, I, I really like Uruguay. I'm even going to go as far to say that whether they finish on the same points or if Uruguay top the group and Portugal come second. So for me, unfortunately, Ghana and South Korea, you'll be watching at home. Uh, hopefully you've got your paid subscriptions because you won't be able to watch And, and, and unfortunately, <laughs> watch it live. Do Portugal know though that they have to make the top two to get out of the group? It's not, you don't finish third and then go on and win the Euros. Yeah, so I, they, yeah. I hope someone's told them that they have to finish in the top two. Yeah, they have. I think um, that was part of the discussion with Piers I think Morgan. Piers Morgan, yeah. <laughs> Ronaldo, I think Piers told Ronaldo about it and he's gone back and, and told the team. All right. And that's why Bruno was 
was so uh, so frosty with the handshake, I think, because Ronaldo said to him, mate, we've got to finish top two. And Bruno goes, what do you mean? I thought it was top three. I reckon Arteta loved that that uh, interview. He would have been sitting there. That's only that's the second most enjoyable thing he's seen this year other than the football his team's been playing in the Premier League. But uh, all right, that's the end of our uh, World Cup wrap. As I said, next week we are our uh, Peely Awards uh, come, come good. We start to give those awards out and uh, we'll start putting up some uh, excellent footage, not only of uh, how we came up with our... Uh, a crazy name, but uh, how we also um, some some footage from the awards. But uh, all right, just before we get into our clinical finish, give us your your finalists, your top finals, depending how obviously the cards fall. Who do you like? So who's who's playing in the World Cup final? Yeah, who's going to play in the World Cup final? Brazil and Spain. Okay, I am going to say Brazil. I'd love to see Brazil and. Uh, Argentina, but I don't think they can based on... Um, they might meet before that. Is that right? Yeah, look, I think they might. I'm also worried with Brazil being on the same side of the draw as Uruguay, so my roughies can't get through. So I'm going to say Brazil and Belgium, if it's possible. I don't know if it is, but uh, one of those two to take it out. So, yeah. All right. So Anything's possible, mate. Anything's possible. It is. Our clinical finish, this is our, our ending of our show. So a couple of quick things here. A what the foot. So our WTF award. Why no Friday women's games? A-League women's, we have three games screen, uh, like we're in South America and we're sharing one TV screen at the bar, three games on the on the one screen and two games on Sunday. I looked ahead to see if this was just a one-off thing or maybe because, I'm no, the, there's no games for I'm a couple the, of weeks. I'm no genius, but I think it actually costs money to, to run the lights at football stadiums. Yeah. So, you know, hence why 1 p.m., 4 p.m. and, and 3 p.m. kickoff, no lights. <laughs> No funds, no money to run the lights. I agree, but uh, guess what? Sometimes you have to realise that you have to be a, a serious league, and if you want to be a serious league, you can't be using fields that um, I could put my cows out the pasture on, uh, and also you can't be having games that aren't on a Friday night. We've got no local football at the moment. It's a perfect opportunity to get fans out to games because you can watch the nothing, World Cup. Nothing happening on a Friday night. Yeah, three o'clock. You, you can watch. You can, you can watch a, a, a women's league, a league game, and and roll into a World Cup at nine pm. Well, I don't know. I just that's for me. The only other thing I would have had is my what the foot, which even came close, was uh, Harry Kuehl jumping the gun by saying, "We will see where the A League is at after we've played Celtic." Now, you guys have just had a twenty-four hour flight. It sounded like a comment where not you were hoping that the the A League's come a long way. You were hoping to say, "Oh, well, we're going to touch them up," and it, it, the league's not it's got a long way to go. So, I think he had a little bit of egg on his face. He's still a great player, probably one of the best three of all time for the Socceroos. But um, when you're the assistant coach, not the head coach, right? Uh, keep your comments to yourself. I'd rather let uh, Ange talk on that, that topic. But uh, that's my uh, Harry Kilbash. Anyway, moving on to our TFR fantasy. It's benched until after the World Cup. So I took a nice lead, even though you made the comeback in the uh, round just before the uh, shutdown. So you've got, I think, another 346 days to make changes before our next round. But uh, I'll still miss it anyway, and I won't get Craig Goodwin I'll t- in. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I, I actually logged in on Friday afternoon to, to make some changes, and I thought, oh, hang on a sec. There's no games this weekend. That's good. So I, I'm, I'm, on I'm, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on time. I'm ready to go. I know. No, my luck. I, I've tried for three weeks to bring Goodman in. I keep missing the cutoff because he's got team plays on the Friday night. If he was in the women's league, we'd be fine because there's no Friday games. But I know my luck. I'll bring him in, and he won't play after the World Cup. He won't come back. <laughs> yes, yeah, they'll sign him up. They will. They'll sign him up there. He'll go and play with Trent Sainsbury in the in the Qatar League. Um, a League women's fixtures this week. The pick of the matches for me. There's two big blue between Sydney and uh, Melbourne Victory, which is always a, a, a cracking clash. And the new team square off. Wellington and Western United. So Western United after a fantastic victory against last year's champions, uh, a Melbourne victory, and Wellington who got touched up by a very good city side. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the two new guys up against each other. Probably no stage fright considering you've had one game and you're up against another team who's kind of building from scratch. So I think that'll be interesting, but definitely the big blue is the one for me. Yeah, definitely. That's that's, that's the, the big standout of the fixtures. But, um, you know, more football. We get a, another five matches and uh, more to talk about next week. Most certainly. If you missed any part of the show or you want to listen to the other episodes, where can they catch it, VIG? Yeah, they can catch us on uh, Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts or all good podcast platforms and uh, up on YouTube, the video up on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. All right, so um, enjoy the World Cup this week. Enjoy the late nights, the early mornings, the millions of coffees and uh, the no sleep, but uh, it's definitely worth it. So uh, enjoy every second of that. We hope you enjoyed the show even half as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And until next week, enjoy the football. And as we say, rise up and join the football revolution. We'll catch you again next week.